dangerous, expensive, and just plain stupid. What were these vehicle designers thinking? Here are the top 15 most stupid vehicle ideas. Number 15, school buses with no seat belts. Ever since the invention of seat belts, there has been a debate as to their usefulness. In severe accidents, they work wonders to keep passengers within the vehicle and prevent further serious injuries or fatalities, but they themselves can cause damage to ribs and break bones. So it's a question of a trade-off to what type of injury is most preferable. There's also evidence to suggest seatbelts may cause more injuries than they prevent at low speed impacts. But overall, the evidence overwhelmingly shows that the number of lives that have been saved by wearing a seatbelt is worth the other potential issues. Which makes it all the more surprising that the vehicles that carry the most fragile of passengers aren't actually required to have them. In the US, it's down to the states to decide whether school buses that weigh over 10,000 pounds need to have seatbelts installed. Currently, only six states, including New York, California, and Texas, require the safety devices to be present. There's simply no doubt that those without them have a higher fatality rate. But common sense is overridden by companies that cite the lower number of low-speed injuries that happen when people aren't wearing seatbelts as the reason why the laws shouldn't change. Of course, the truth of the matter is that manufacturers want to keep costs down by not having to fit seatbelts to the vehicles. And the argument has very little to do with safety at all. Number 14, Chevrolet Envy. If you pick the right car, you'll almost certainly be the envy of your friends and everyone else that uses the road alongside you. But it was almost guaranteed that naming a model the NV would ensure that it garnered the complete opposite reaction. And that's precisely how people view General Motors' design, which stands for Electric Network Vehicle. In fairness, the vehicle incorporates a number of features that will likely be a mainstay of personal transport in the coming years. It's fully electric and can be driven autonomously or manually. And you can summon it to your location by tapping on an app on your smartphone. What's a problem with the NV, though, is the way it looks. And it probably won't surprise you to learn that the design was created in conjunction with Segway. Looking more like a cramped toy robot than a car, and definitely not appearing to provide much protection if you were to be in an accident. It's going to be a long time before people who are used to having electric vehicles they're proud of will be open to owning something like this. Even though multiple NVs can link together to work in tandem with one another, the way they're better off for the environment and the fact that you won't necessarily need a license to have one, the design is probably many steps too far for most owners. And the technology will live on in cars that look more like cars. Number 13, UB and Puma. Car manufacturers have known for a long time that there are plenty of customers willing to pay huge sums for the latest and most eye-turning vehicles. But it's very easy to make something that's wide of the mark of what any self-respecting person would ever be seen driving. The UB and Puma, which was designed by a leading cosmetic surgeon from LA, is one of the best examples of this and is arguably one of the stupidest vehicle ideas to have ever gone into production. Described as an exotic monster truck, the V8-powered fiberglass car produces 505 brake horsepower. But what's difficult to comprehend about this vehicle is its ridiculous size. At 20 feet long, it's longer than a Rolls-Royce Phantom, and with a width of 7.75 feet, almost as wide as a bus. It's completely impractical for most roads, and will use a two-lane street like there's only room for one car. But perhaps the most surprising thing is that having been created by a cosmetic surgeon, it seems as if no thought has been put into its aesthetic design whatsoever. The best description given to it is that it's fish-like, and that's probably being generous. It's based around a Volvo C70, but with new bodywork. But for some reason, nothing new was added to the interior, and there's nowhere near as much storage space as you would expect. Unsurprisingly, orders never came in for the Puma after it was unveiled in 2013. Oh, did we mention that it cost $1.1 million? Number 12, Vought XF5U. Also known as the Flying Flapjack, for reasons that will become clear, the Vought XF5U was an experimental aircraft that was designed for use by the US Navy during the Second World War. Built around a flat disc-like body, which was how the aircraft generated its lift, it was powered by two piston engines within the body that drove the propellers. Based on blueprints, there was excitement about the potential capabilities of the XF5U. It had a theoretical top speed of 550 miles per hour and was generally seen as the epitome of propeller-driven aeronautical design. There were slight problems that it faced when it finally went into production, however. 
Already well overdue and well over budget, the aircraft was fully made from metal and so was extremely heavy. This led to severe vibration problems when it was taxiing along the ground, let alone when it was in flight, and no matter what was tried, this couldn't be rectified. The aircraft design wasn't moving on at a rapid pace with the introduction of jet engines to replace propellers. Perhaps more effort would have been put into making the XF-5U a viable project. In the end, though, the project was scrapped, and the only working prototype of the flying flapjack had to be demolished by a wrecking ball because its metal frame was so uncompromisingly tough. Number 11. The Rinspeed X-Trem Rinspeed is a company known for creating vehicles with unique abilities. Recently, they've designed a model where the steering wheel can be moved from one side of the cabin to the other. While they've long had an obsession with trying to create a car that works just as well on the road as it does in the water. In a sign of how out of touch they truly are with the rest of the world, however, the little-known Rinspeed X-Trem, which was revealed in 1999, took gimmicky car design to a whole new level. From the moment you see the bright yellow monstrosity, you can tell that there's something unusual about the car. But while the secret it's holding might seem amazing at first, the practicality will soon dawn on you and make you question why anyone thought this would be a good idea. If you haven't figured it out already, this car has its own portable hovercraft that's secured on the back. Presumably thinking of Thunderbird 2 when they were drawing up the designs, there wasn't a ramp to release the hovercraft, and instead you had to use the inbuilt crane to lower it down or pick it back up. The designers said they had seen pickup truck drivers using their vehicles to tow boats and motorbikes, but hardly ever used the bed. So the X-Trem was actually intended to be able to carry any vehicle you want on the back, so long as you had somewhere to store your hovercraft if you weren't planning on using it. The car itself was based on an M-Class Mercedes with a 5.5-liter V8 engine, but with only room for two people, and no windows or doors. Is it really a surprise that you've never seen one of these stupid vehicles in real life? Number 10. The Honda Fuyejo. There's no doubt that Honda is one of the most inventive car companies in the world, but not every vehicle they've come up with has been the greatest of ideas. In 1999, they revealed the Fuyejo, a name that means sleepless city. And amazingly, this box on wheels was intended to target the youth market. The idea behind it may not have been the worst, but the realization of the concept was atrocious. Honda believed that there was a desire for a way to continue the party while traveling between nightclubs and party hotspots, and the Fuya Joe had enough space inside that passengers would be able to stand up with a drink in hand and dance the night away. Everything inside was designed to resemble a club, with even the driver's dashboard looking like a DJ deck and a steering wheel that looked like a turntable. The Fuya Joe did have several features that are commonplace these days, such as a hybrid power system that reduced fuel consumption. But it seems they forgot that the clientele the car was designed for tend to put style over substance, and the idea of buying a toaster on wheels was simply too much of an ask. The Fuya Joe therefore never made it past the concept stage and was consigned to history as yet another stupid vehicle idea. Number 9. Bricklin SV1 in a lot of ways, the 1970s were the heyday of car design. Technology was improving and creatives were able to incorporate a number of features that had, until that point, been impossible to put into mass production. But for every successful car, there were countless ones that fell by the wayside. The Brooklyn SV1 was amazingly in production for more than a year and over 3,000 of them were built. But when they got into the hands of customers, endless reliability problems saw prices for the cars and the parts skyrocket and consumer interest soon evaporated. The most noticeable features were the gullwing doors, similar to those of a DeLorean, but the ones on the Bricklin were hardly practical. Each one weighed 90 pounds and took 12 seconds to open and close, which seems like forever in comparison with normal doors. As a part of the promotional campaign, Bricklin leased five of the vehicles to the Arizona police force, but officers found the doors so difficult to use in time-sensitive pursuits, and the batteries had such a tendency to overheat in the Arizona climate that they were soon returned. No space was set aside for a spare tire, and the doors couldn't open if the car was upside down, which both contributed to the vehicle becoming known for being less than safe or practical in real-world settings, something that was made all the more ironic because of the car's name which stood for the Safety Vehicle One. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. The Fuller Dymaxion There's a reason why planes are built the way they are. 
boats look a certain way, and cars have particular design features. But the creatives behind the Fuller Dymaxion wanted to ignore these seemingly nonsensical trends and decided to try something that resembled a boat on wheels. Conceived by famed American inventor Buckminster Fuller, they were first exhibited at the Chicago World Fair in 1933 and were a co-creation between him and a naval architect. The intent was that one day additions could be made that would allow it to fly or to sail and that this was just the primary phase of the design. In the end, of course, it transpired to be the only phase, with only three ever being fully built, and there being no desire whatsoever from consumers for any more to be made available for sale. Made from aluminum around an ash wood frame, the Dymaxion was supposedly designed to be more aerodynamic than other vehicles and far more fuel efficient. It had three wheels, two at the front and one at the rear, and it was the rear wheel that was used for steering and could actually give quite impressive maneuverability for the 20-foot long car. There were, however, limitations as to how agile it was, particularly at high speeds and in windy weather, and one of the test drivers was actually killed in a collision during an exhibition. The Dymaxion was subsequently described as an invention that could not be made available to the general public without significant improvements, which is hardly the kind of assessment a car manufacturer would ever want. Number seven, Sbarro Autobau. Sbarro is a Swiss car manufacturer that's known for its radical designs, but visitors to the Geneva Motor Show in 2010 must have thought they'd walked on to the set of the latest Mad Max movie when they saw the company's latest concept vehicle, the Autobau. Designed in honor of the designer's friend, a successful race driver, the 3,300-pound vehicle has a Stingray-style shape with a three-pronged front, which has drawn comparisons to both the Pink Panther Mobile and the Cylon Raider from Battlestar Galactica. It's powered by a Ferrari-designed 500-horsepower 12-cylinder engine, which will let any owners keep up with virtually anything else on the road. And in an unusual design choice, instead of opting to fit doors to the car, the entire front portion of the chassis lifts up to let people get in or get out. The Autobau definitely has the pedigree of an amazing car, but the exterior aesthetics were what proved to be most controversial about it. Most people saw it as a hideous creation, while some found it to be cool, modern, and future-facing. What do you think? Would you be seen driving one of these? Number six, the Ford Nucleon. The first vehicles were pulled by horses, then came the combustion engine that allowed us to generate momentum by burning fuel, and now in the 21st century, a new range of vehicles are being produced to reduce our reliance on petrol and work solely on electricity. But there was a time when alternatives were being sought, and this led to the design of a car by Ford, which would be powered by nuclear energy. Yeah, you heard that right. For a time in the 1950s, car manufacturers were open to the idea of having inbuilt nuclear power generators in every vehicle, which would have presumably negated any need for safety features whatsoever. Because if you were involved in a crash, it would probably have spelled the end of all life within a two-mile radius. But in that decade, nuclear was being heralded as the power source that would change the world, and manufacturers couldn't afford to ignore its potential benefits. The Ford Nucleon was designed to contain a small nuclear reactor in its trunk, and this would be enough to drive for 5,000 miles without the need to refuel. Inside the reactor, similar to how it works in a power plant, uranium fission would be used to heat water to produce high-pressure steam, which would drive two turbines, one for the car's torque and the others to provide electricity. Once the reactor ran out of fuel, you'd simply drive up to a service station where it would be removed and replaced with a new one. No working prototype was ever built, however, because a small enough nuclear reactor proved impossible to build at a reasonable cost. With increasing concerns about the use of nuclear energy by the beginning of the 1960s, research and development of the concept was halted, and the Nucleon remained a pipe dream. Number 5. Bartini Beria VVA-14 when you first see an image of the Bartini Beria VVA-14, it's almost impossible not to be reminded of the spaceship Serenity from the sci-fi show Firefly. But amazingly, this is a real aircraft that was built in the Soviet Union during the early 1970s. It was designed to be a vertical takeoff amphibious craft, which could fly at high altitudes or hover just above the surface of the water, and its main objective was to find and destroy enemy submarines. With an intended crew of three, a wingspan of 98 feet, and a length of 85 feet, it was a radical design that began to encounter problems soon as the first prototype had been finished. When it was able to take off using a conventional runway, its ability to land on water proved to be tricky at best, and planned upgrades didn't manage to improve the situation. 
By the time its creator died in 1974, interest in the viability of the aircraft evaporated, and after conducting 107 test flights and logging a total flight time of 103 hours, the only prototype that remained of the original three was put on display at the Central Air Force Museum in Moscow, where it remains to this day. Number 4. BMW Z1 Occasionally, a car manufacturer comes up with a novel design that, at the time, might just seem like the new big innovation. But when people actually try using it in real-life situations, it soon becomes clear that it's not fit for purpose. That's what happened to BMW in 1989, with the release of the Z1. And while they did a lot of things right with this car, they got one thing very, very wrong. At first, it looks like any other vehicle from the era. The two-seater convertible had plastic body panels, a 2.5-liter straight-six engine that generated decent power, and a protective roll bar built within the windscreen surround. But what the Z1 became renowned for was its doors. You've seen ones that open backwards, ones that open forward, ones that open upwards. But have you ever seen car doors that open downwards? If you thought the car seemed to have high sides, that's because the way you get in is for the doors to actually slide down within the bodywork, and you climb over to sit down before they rise back up again. This gave the Z1 the rather peculiar honor of being one of the only road cars that could technically, although perhaps not legally, be driven while the doors are still open without any loss of performance. They're certainly novel and unique, but a series of technical issues plagued the design, and the Z1s were only produced in limited numbers. From their learning with the doors, BMW decided never to build them like it again, and no other manufacturer has yet tried to replicate them. Number 3. The Fifth Wheel Cadillac No matter how experienced a driver you are, there are some maneuvers that remain either difficult or annoying to have to do. One of the most hated things drivers face is the idea of parking their car into a small space, or ever more frustratingly, seeing a spot that's just the right size for the car but doesn't have enough extra room to be able to drive into. Well, in 1951, the designers at Cadillac came up with the perfect solution for this, a fifth wheel. In fact, it was the car's spare wheel that was mounted on a perpendicular axle that, at the pull of a lever, could be lowered down to the road and provide sideways movement from the rear, which gave the car an incredibly tight turning radius. It's possibly one of the stupidest car inventions ever, while at the same time being one of the most genius adaptations to a vehicle, and it's truly a surprise that the idea didn't become more mainstream. It could have saved endless hours spent driving through streets in search of somewhere to park. But then again, what would you have done if you had needed to use the spare wheel for its intended purpose? Number 2. Sinclair C5 Electric vehicles are increasingly becoming a common sight on the roads, and apart from how quiet they are, there's very little difference between them and their gas-guzzling relatives. The road to this electrical revolution has been a long one, however, and not every step has been an improvement. There's good reason why it's only now that electric cars have become mainstream. Sir Clive Sinclair, a famed British inventor, turned his hand to the concept in 1985, but with limited technology compared to what's available today, it didn't exactly look like a Tesla. Known as the C5, it was a little more than an electrically powered tricycle within a sturdy body, but it was the way it looked and concerns about safety on the road with cars that proved to be its undoing. Announced in 1985, it was panned by the country's media, and sales were lackluster. People just couldn't imagine themselves using one of these to travel anywhere. And with a range of just 20 miles, you'd quite often find yourself having to walk it back home if you traveled slightly further than expected. It was undoubtedly a stupid vehicle idea, but if it hadn't been for pioneers trying things like this more than 30 years ago, perhaps we wouldn't have the incredible electric vehicles that are on offer today. Number 1. Automatic Seatbelt The introduction of seatbelts was, at first, a controversial idea, particularly in the United States. And to begin with, there was very little uptake of the devices. Authorities had the data at hand that proved how effective they are at preventing fatalities, but weren't able to convince the public that the extra effort of strapping the belt over themselves was worth it. And this led to one of the stupidest vehicle ideas ever invented. Not necessarily because of what it was or what it did, but because there was such a need for it in the first place. The automatic seatbelt. Those of a certain age will look back on these fondly, while those from a younger generation probably can't believe what they're looking at. But the idea here was simple. All a passenger in the car needed to do was to manually attach the belt across their lap, and the part that went across their torso would apply automatically. When the door was opened, it would move forward to release, and when the door was closed, it would tighten back. The problem was, these designs were never as safe as fully manual seatbelts, because they were attached to a less sturdy part of the car. 
and users often forgot to attach the lap belt themselves. Ultimately, they went out of fashion, and most people accepted the need to secure themselves into their seat on their own. Subscribe to Top 5s for more and check out some of our other popular videos.